Okay, guys, welcome back. <clears throat> so let's move on to the next question. So previously we have seen who invented a microprocessor, it was Marky and Hub. Then the next question, which is not a portable computer? Which is not a portable computer? So is it mini computer, laptop computer, micro computer, all of the above? It is mini computer. Then the first microprocessor built by the Intel Corporation was the first microprocessor built by the Intel Corporation. So which is this? Is this eight double zero eight eight zero eight zero four double zero four double eight double zero? It is four double zero four. A digital computer did not score over an analog computer in terms of again simply just in shortly I will write a uh, digital computer is weak in dash compared to analog computer. It is in accuracy. Then the proper definition of a modern digital computer. What is the proper definition of a modern, modern digital computer? So it is a machine that works on binary code. Then
which operation is not performed by computer? which operation is not performed by computer? Is it uh, inputting, processing, controlling, understanding? It is understanding. Computers that are portable and convenient for users who travel are known as supercomputers, laptops, mini computers, file servers. So it is laptops. Analog computer works on the supply of analog computers work on the supply of. It works on the supply of electrical pulses, but not continuous. Next, we will discuss about the basic computer architecture. So in this, we will see components of a digital computer. So the components of digital computer are input, unit, output unit, CPU, memory, so these are the main components of a digital computer. So the input unit 
it provides an interface between users and the machine. Okay. Then for inputting the data and instructions, it provides the interface. One of the most common examples is the keyboard, right? So you can enter the data using keyboard, mouse, right? And other input devices also, like voice entry, joystick, scanner. So all these can be treated as input devices. You can input in many forms also, audio, visual, graphical, etc. Sometimes the secondary storage devices such as floppy disk, magnetic tapes, these are also, uh, these can also function like the input devices. The data in any form is first digitized, means it is converted to the binary form by the input device before uh, going to the CPU. Okay, then the output unit. Then the output unit, like the input unit, it is also it also provides an interface between user and the machine. Common example is the monitor of a personal computer. The output unit receives the data from the CPU in the form of binary bits. This is then converted into a desired format, like the graphical format, audio format, visual format that can be understood by the user, okay? So what are the common examples of the output unit? So we know monitor, printers, speakers, secondary storage devices, all right? So combination of input and output devices is called as peripherals. Then the CPU. The CPU is the brain of the computer system. The input and output devices may vary from different application, but there is only one CPU for the particular computer. The specifications of a computer are basically characterized by its central processing unit, that is CPU. So CPU is the brain of the computer system. The input and output devices may vary from different application, but there is only one CPU for a particular computer. The specifications of a computer are basically characterized by its CPU. So the CPU can be further divided into ALU, the 
control unit and the main memory. Okay. Then we have the, in CPU, we have the arithmetic logic unit, arithmetical logic unit, which performs arithmetic calculations, logical calculations. Then we have control unit, okay. Then we have the memory unit. The memory unit consists of random access memory and the read-only memory. Then we have also the cache memory, okay? Cache memory lies between the processor and the main memory. Then what is the functioning of the Control unit. So the control unit is the nerve center of the computer. Every instruction before being executed is first interpreted by the control unit. The sequence of operations involved in processing an instruction is known as the instruction cycle. then the instruction cycle can be divided into two parts. So we can say fetch cycle and execution cycle. So fetch cycle, the control unit fetches the instruction from the memory data register and places it in the current instruction register. Then we have execution cycle. The control unit then decodes this instruction in the current instruction register and sends the appropriate signal to the 
concerned device for the execution of the instruction. So in the fetch cycle, the control unit fetches the instruction from the memory data register and places it in the current instruction register. In the execution cycle, the control unit decodes this instruction in the current instruction register and sends the appropriate signal to the concerned device for the execution of this instruction.